Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in our super secret test location in the southwest of England. Today's video is a little tribute to Jim Dunlop who we lost very recently, uh, which is very very sad for the guitar community. If you are in any way uh, affiliated with guitar, bass, mandolin, anywhere where a plectrum is required, anywhere where strings are required or a capo or anything like that, you will know uh, Jim Dunlop and what he what he had created will have passed through your hands. So this video is a little tribute to Jim uh, and we're going to go through some of my favourites of his creations. So I hope you'll join me in wandering down this path and celebrating the life of this guy uh, who's made such an enormous difference to the industry that we all love so very very much. Jim Dunlop was born in Scotland and he worked as a chemical processing engineer uh, as partly as an apprentice to a guy called William Bill Wallace uh, who is the bloke that pioneered the first hip replacement. Now obviously you can read about that uh, on Wikipedia along with many other things as I have done but what you can't read about um, at least on a personal level is the effect that he's had on all the players who've used Dunlop over the years, whether they've been using strings, picks, capos, uh, straps, anything like that. And I'd like to share with you um, my experience thereof because I can't speak for everybody else, I can only speak for myself. And so Heavy Repping is completely indebted uh, to Jim Dunlop and the things that he created. Now if we go back in time what you'll find is that it was a company called Dandrea who were the ones that standardised the 351 and 346 and all the, the plectrum shapes and sizes that we use uh, back in the early 1920s. But it was in 1981 when Dunlop launched the colour-coded Tortex line that everything changed in the world of picks. Now prior to that, picks had been made from tortoiseshell, had been made from celluloid, and indeed Dunlop himself started making them from nylon. Uh, it wasn't until, that was in the 70s, but it wasn't until later on that he'd make them from Tortex, which is his variant. It was his specific variant of Delrin, which was pioneered by DuPont uh, in the first place, in I think in the 40s and 50s. But... It's because of what he did with things like the Jazz 3, which we've covered in a previous video, uh, and indeed his take on the 351, uh, the shape and the consistency of the material that really um, took Dunlop into the hands of so many players. Now, we're always going on about the Dunlop 73, but indeed it's worth mentioning things like the 88 more more sort of specific models like the Sharp uh, and the Jazz. Now, all of these picks are incredibly influential and I myself grew up using the Dunlop 60, which was my pick of choice for a long time. In fact, it, was, you know, it just seemed like that was the natural choice to make. However, I did graduate after that onto the 500 series um, 71, which is the powder pink one, and I used those for years and years and years. I would punch uh, holes in them. I think I've still got one um, somewhere uh, that I used in my very, very first proper, proper band uh, back in the 90s. Uh, I suppose this, in a way, this is my first experience of, um, of boutique picks or alternative picks was that I, I, I remember getting a Dunlop The Wedge which is uh, the 351, but it's a little wider at the top and pointer at the bottom, you can see one here. I could talk about this a great deal, but I think uh, what I'm going to do is use the stick and my pedal board and the WEM, and I'm going to play some of my absolute favourite Dunlop picks uh, and let you hear why it is that they were such a big deal. So let's do just that.
So there you are. It's a nice little trip down memory lane, that, in a way. Um, all those songs were things that I learned chronologically as my playing style changed and my taste changed. And throughout it all, and it's a funny thing to it's a funny thing to do, you know. Now I've I've been playing since ninety five, so I said in the first video, and since then, um, I've always had Dunlop picks. But that's only you know that's only really to do with me. If we're talking about Jim's sort of widespread influence, if you think about it this way, and it's the thing that kind of. It moved me quite a bit on the day that he on the day that he passed away, because I never met this guy. Uh, I've got to meet people like Jim Marshall and that sort of thing, but I never got to meet Jim Dunlop because he was in Benicia, I guess. But even though I've never met him, and most of you watching will never have met him, and if you have, that's tremendous. Uh, he's been on through his creations and what he achieved with, particularly with the Tortex series. Uh, he's been on more records by proxy than any other uh, artist or musician in history. If you think about the number of records that have had Dunlop picks, strings and, and all the rest of it used on them, even just as a something somebody wouldn't even think about, they're not I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the Dunlop on this, you know. Uh, they've just got piles of picks for, for tours. How many tour dates? that he's ended up being involved in, how many um, how many late gigs and load-ins and uh, break, band breakups and band formations and signings, you know, it, it just even having the picks in your pocket means that Dunlop was always with you. And that's something that's very easy to take for granted. I know that a lot of players from posts that I've seen online went back and looked at their own personal history, their own musical history, and said, well, thanks for all the memories, Jim, and thanks for all these, um, thanks for making these these picks that helped me make my music. I've always used Dunlop, and I, I always will, and, and all that sort of thing. And even though that seems like such a, no, everybody always says how important people were to them after they've, after they've passed away, because that is our, nature as, as a species to do that uh, but I think in this instance I don't think the guitar community really realised until a couple of days after when posts were still coming through from all over the world in all languages from all genres of music and all that sort of thing I don't think anybody really realised just how much that that man and his company and his creations permeated their lives. How much it, how much Dunlop is ever present in the musical landscape, and the fact that it continues to grow and change and add new things and inspire new players. Some of the some of the most exciting players of of the next generation that are coming up now, like Toes and Abassi, uh, and uh, Andy James and people like that, have got their own signature models. John Petrucci's had. I don't know how many uh, different models uh, of Plectrum from Dunlop. And that is, that's testament to the company's influence. These guys can choose anything, really. You know, they're very, especially players like Abassi and, and uh, Petrucci, they're very, and Eric Johnson, let's not forget. They're very, very, very um, careful about what equipment they use. They're very pointed in saying, I need this from my rig, I need this amp sound, I need this guitar, I need this, this, this. And they still choose to use Dunlop. They don't stray, which is really interesting. So I hope that this video has been a worthwhile little nod to the guy. I'm just one player in, in a cast of millions, I suppose. Uh, and this is just one channel in a in a host of millions on YouTube, but um, but Dunlop's always been really important to me and will continue to be so, uh, whether I was a pick lover or not. So I salute you, Jim, wherever you are, and uh, I hope that there's um, I hope there's a proper reception waiting for you wherever we go, and uh, just know on the off chance that you're watching YouTube through some 
spectral means or what have you, uh, just know that there are very, very few people in this industry that will have a legacy as every day and as, an, as important as what you accomplished. So, um, yeah. So I raise, a, I raise a glass. Doesn't have anything in it, but I raise a glass. Let's raise two, why not, to Jim Dunlop and the Dunlop family and um, keep making music because that's what he would want you to do. That's all he ever wanted, really. So my name's John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping, and I shall see you soon.